Kia ora te whanau. How's it going everyone? Thank you for coming to see me on my 25 question ASMR tag video which um, as you may or may not know was started by GB and has spread throughout the ASMR community and lots of people have been answering the questions and doing their version so it's now my turn I was nominated tagged by uh, Matt at Articulate Design and CL on CL ASMR both of which I will of course link to in the description I um, before I answer the questions I'll tag some people for myself who I don't think have already been tagged but you can get more than one tag so it's no big deal um, I was going to talk about these channels but I think I will just say their name and put a little bit of detail in the description um, I will say this first name Grace's Grove uh, has been a huge supporter of mine since I started my channel so she definitely needs to be tagged and Zach's World ASMR another awesome smaller ASMR channel um, who's uh, got a great voice really relaxing um, Jellybean Green I'm tagging you because I don't think you've had your turn yet um, and two more Artsy ASMR who has a really interesting channel really diverse does a whole bunch of different stuff she's really great and this last one is interesting because she has been away for a while like a year and only just recently came back and that's ASMR with Ali so there you go Ali I hope uh, if you see this you will do your, take my tag and go and do your version of this <laughs> anyway um, let's get into the questions shall we so question number one when was the first time you experienced ASMR well I think I've always experienced it since I was very young but the only time I can consciously think of it even though we did obviously we didn't call it that was in high school at maybe about the age of 13 or 14 and it was in my religious studies class which was a thing in Scotland where I grew up I don't know if it still is um, but the teacher she had basically had an ASMR voice just smooth and relaxing and with a cadence that would just send you off to sleep not out of boredom out of pure just warm relaxation and I loved that class because even the troublemakers of which we had quite a few in my school not me of course I was a good boy um, even they would be good even they would zone out so it was a very interesting class and after that class we would just be walking on like walking on air to the next class before we snapped out of it and became four, 13 and four, typical 13 and 14 year olds again so I think that was the first time I was really aware that there was a trigger for the sensation so yeah when was the first time you watched ASMR 
on YouTube. Um, would have been probably about 2012. And it most certainly was, I don't know who was first, but it would have been either Maria, a gentle whispering, and or ASMR or it. Um, and I remember looking up relaxing voices, voices for relaxation or something like that. And it came up with, ASMR came up with a gentle whispering, I believe was the first one. I'm not sure. It was either her or ASMR or it. And I watched them both at the same time, around about the same time. And yeah, it was, I was like, this is it. This is what I love. This is what I've been looking for. So yeah. Question three, what's your favorite unintentional ASMR video? Well, um, the one I go to, which it sort of, it's by, okay, it's by Nomad Barber, the world's greatest head massage. And even though Nomad Barber channel does have ASMR in his banner now at the top. I don't think he did originally, so I still think it was unintentional. And he realized that a lot of people were gravitating toward his channel for ASMR purposes, even though that may not have been his original intention, I think. Um, and the one I love is uh, The World's Greatest Head Massage by Baba, the Cosmic Barber which is um, very sad because he passed away about a week ago, which hit a lot of people pretty hard, obviously, beyond his family, I mean, because um, he was loved by millions of people around the world, including me. So it's, um, I find that a bit hard to watch that video now, knowing that he's gone. That would be my number one favourite unintentional ASMR video. Name the last five ASMR artists that you watched. Okay, so I had to I had to go through my history to find out. Because um, I do jump around a lot of different videos. So I've written them down. Forgive me, I'm glancing at my screen, obviously. Um, the last one I watched, uh, one of the last ones I watched was um, Fixing You Roleplay by Articulate Design. I will confess I did not watch it all because it's quite long. And, but that's such a great compliment, isn't it? For any ASM artist. Hey, I, I watched some of your video, but I fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> so yeah, that one. Um, Nice Guy Eddie, Ear to Ear Max Tingles video. Uh, actually, I think this might be the first time I've properly watched a Nice Guy Eddie video. And it was great. Really great. Also, um, third one was uh, Sophie Michelle painting your face for Halloween, which uh, was really, really visually excellent as well and then I have uh, Jelly Bean Green you're my favorite Android which is my favorite I think probably my favorite role one of my favorite role plays that she's done um, I really like that one this last one is an old one from about three years ago yeah and that's Brittany ASMR, ear cupping for relaxation and sleep. That's one of my go-to videos. And uh, it's, I think Brittany's channel has declined. And But thankfully Brittany is coming back. But she has been around for a lot longer than lots of other ASMR artists. And has made some really amazing 
that video is really amazing ASMR and that one is just brilliant and I go to it all the time so yeah it's, uh, I actually troll the comment section on that video so you'll see me like hey it's me and, oh my god I'm back again six months later than a year later that type of thing so yeah um, what is your favorite this is question number five what is your favorite ASMR trigger to listen to? This is a tricky one because ASMR is the whole package, right? Like that last Brittany video I was telling you about. Um, multiple sounds. But I think if I had to pick one, it would just be voices. Because even if you got rid of everything else, you would still have ASMR with just voices. Just like Bob Ross, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I think voices would be my favourite. What is your least, what is your least favourite trigger to listen to? Then do it. Man, I don't want to do it though. Um, I think like most people, like I do get a bit uncomfortable at some mouth sounds. Although I do like some mouth sounds too, so, you know, I can't, I don't know. Um, ear eating maybe, not judging anyone, because I actually, I did like ear eating when it first started. I thought, oh wow, this is pretty cool, and it was really crazy, but now I'm not really into it as much. Um, but I have to do it, don't I? How can I do ear eating with a... Blue Yeti though, there's no ears on it, so I can't do it, that means I'm exempt from that one, right? <laughs> That's pathetic. <laughs> um. lost track of where I was. Uh, what was your least favourite to do, do it, did it? Okay, do you use ASMR to relax or fall asleep? Uh, definitely both more so fall asleep, I would say. But I will definitely, if I'm having a bad day or I'm at lunch break, stressful day, I will put on ASMR, like in the car, sometimes. But it does make me sleepy though, during the day. Okay, what is your bedtime routine? Wow, nothing much to it really. I get my clothes and I neatly put them away in the on the floor drobe. And then brush my teeth and I actually have a, a little plastic splint thing which goes in my teeth to keep my jaw open because I, I was grinding my teeth so I brush my teeth but I also have to brush that then I grab some glass glass water jump into bed phone headphones and then I drift off into ASMR sleepy land. Not every night, but most nights. Um, what is your favourite trigger to do? Do it. Well, it's easy, I'm doing it right now. I'm just talking. And I think most people on my channel seem to respond best to that. That's been the general consensus. Nobody's ever really said tapping or um, crinkling or whatever they just for some, for some reason other people like my voice and that's that's brilliant I'll just keep doing that um, what is your least favourite trigger to do and to do this too I think least favourite trigger that that I've done 
his unintelligible whispers because I find it well it's it's unnatural and it's it's I find it really hard to to breathe throughout it so and uh, actually I've only done one video with unintelligible whispers and I used the unintellig unintelligible whispers format to hide a bunch of swear words to see if I think it's it's been demonetized now but it wasn't for a while I tried to hide a bunch of swear words in it just to see if I could slip under the YouTube radar and it did however they were unintelligible so you could arguably say they weren't really swear words but some of them are really, really bad too. Um, but yeah, I did actually change the name of the video to Unintelligible Swearing, hoping that people might watch it more. And then it got demonetized. <laughs> and quite right as well, because there was some naughty, naughty words in there. How long does it take you to make a video? My videos tend to be on the shorter side. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've had some videos as short as 9 minutes, 40 odd minutes maximum. Except for my live streams, they can go on for a while. Um, so, say a 20 minute video. Um, well, it takes 20 minutes to make it, 10-15 minutes of prep, depending on what it is, or longer, and then I could edit, edit it really quickly, usually I could edit it in as little as 10-15 minutes, and then uh, export and render it, maybe another 15-20 minutes, and then upload five minutes so I can I can do it pretty quickly I see some uh, is smartest often complain about how it's gonna take you know four hours to upload a video or something like that and I'm always I'm surprised at that because unless the video is hours and hours long I I don't know why the file would be so big so I think I've got the right settings on mine where so basically unless you're filming a car chase or something with a lot of movement a talking head like this on a background like that really doesn't require a high bit rate or anything like that or um, to to make it look good I think so I, I my settings have all that stuff trimmed right down and well, you can be the judge. You can tell me if I've trimmed it too much, if this looks okay, if this sounds okay, or not. And this video, let's say it turns out to be 30 minutes long, may end up being a gigabyte. Yeah, maybe less actually. Eight or 900 megabytes if I'm lucky. And that doesn't take long to upload. So I wonder if other artists are getting like 10 gigabyte files or 20 gigabyte files and uploading them in which case I I'm surprised so um, anyone needs help with that let me know maybe I maybe I can assist with the settings or something if you want have question number 12 have you ever got tingles from your own videos um, yeah, maybe from the trigger sounds themselves, especially if it's something I have to go over and over and over to trim something out. But generally speaking, I don't listen to all of my videos, probably why I can edit it so quickly. I don't really listen to all of it or watch all of it anyway. I don't like watching myself. 
um, but I will skip to the bad bits and the bad bits in a video I highlight by clicking my finger three times louder than that into the microphone so that three little spikes appear on the waveform in the editing and that way when I edit it I can see the little spikes here and here and here so I just go to that bit cut it out go to that one cut it out next one cut it out and then done not as simple as that but mostly done so um, I don't really get tingles from my own video because I just go through it so quickly but if I have to go over a particular section yeah maybe sometimes but generally not um, do you watch your own videos no with the exception of my interrogation ones because they were scripted acting videos which I really wanted to it was more like practice and I, I wanted to try and see where I went wrong or where I thought I went right and critique myself so I watched those a couple of times question 14 what software do you use to edit I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro a slightly older version of it but it's, it's great 16 what is your favorite video that you've made um probably I really like the interrogation videos because they were to me they were more proper acting and and scripted so more work went into them but purely for my channel and ASMR purposes the cranial nerve exam is probably my favorite um certainly the most viewed that I have and I did a I thought the improv was quite quite good and people seem to like it so I'm really happy with it has one of your videos had an unexpected negative fan reaction excuse me um No, not really. I mean, I've, I've get, I get a few of the people who stagger their way into my videos from someplace else and are like, what the fuck is this? Or, you know, why is this guy whispering? That type of thing. Well, they're not really fans, though, are they? So I guess it doesn't count. Um, no. No, I don't think I've had any really negative fan reactions. What videos of yours do you think didn't get the love it deserved? Um, I think most of my all most of my videos have gotten the f the right amount of attention for as good as they were. I mean, it's like the audience is always right, if you know what I mean. Um. The only one I could think of that maybe at the time I wish it got more traction but then it was a real niche within a niche was my um, Maori words video which I did ages ago and I thought this will be cool because no one's done it before and um, but yeah I, I think I had a couple of people find it but then it was a real niche within a niche so still there maybe it'll blow up one day what's something the audience doesn't know about the behind the scenes of your channel um, well technical stuff maybe I got rid of um, you may or may not recognize this This is a Blue Yeti stand, which has something spilled on it, unfortunately. Um, I don't use it anymore. Because I have an arm now, 
which is clamped onto my desk and swings around. I would show it to you, but I don't really want to make too much noise through the through the Yeti. What I'll do is I'll take a photo and I'll put it right here. Okay. So I use an arm, and for my drawing videos, which I do for um, my streams and stuff, I have another arm, which is a slightly different one. Also, my computer is elevated off the ground, off the floor, so that the sound of the fans doesn't oscillate through and then up through the desk and then into the mic. And in order to keep it elevated, I pinched some of my kids' foam, colored foam blocks from the playroom, and it's sitting elevated. So I'll put that right just like that so yeah nothing too exciting but a little bit of an insight into the magic behind the scenes <laughs> what's the most absurd request you've received from a fan question 20 so I've had a couple of odd requests, I wouldn't say they were absurd. A couple of them were like, hey man, I need you to tap on these Nutella jars. And it has to be with the foil in a particular way. And, and I'm like, mm, okay. I tend to ignore those because I don't, don't want to say, yeah, sure, I'll go do that. Or, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going out and buying five Nutella jars and, and tapping on them. I mean, it might be cool. So I tend to just ignore those because I don't really know how to answer them. Um, another one was somebody wanted me to pretend that the viewer was like an ant and I was going to trap them in a glass and I was like a big huge giant. <laughs> and I, I don't know what the premise was exactly but it was something like that. Again I just thought, I, thought, mm, yeah, I think I'll just leave that one for now. Um, do your family and friends know you make ASMR videos? Yeah, my uh, wife knows and a couple of my mates know. Um, the rest of my family, like my mom and stuff, they might know. If they do, they haven't told me. So, um, and that's okay if they do. Um, I will happily explain it to them one day I guess but in the meantime I just keep it quiet they'll find out when they find out so have you ever been recognized in public question 22 um no not for ASMR no I've been recognized in public for other things where I was on TV but yeah not for ASMR um, what inspires your video ideas <sighs> just you know the uh, university of life <laughs> I was laughing people say that um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, I just look around and I see things like any idea. Where does any idea come from? You start with something, you see something, you think it's funny, you think, oh, what if we did it this way? What if we did it that way? And I drive quite a long way to work and back every day, so I sit in the car. And I definitely have a lot of time to think about ideas. So I that seems to be where I formulate them but where they come from University of Life um, question 24 oh, we're almost done where do you find yourself spending the most time online <sighs> YouTube Twitter and 
Facebook would be a distant third. So, yeah. What advice would you give someone who wanted to make their own ASMR content? So, I got, I got asked this before when I did a little written interview for ASMR University. And I stand by what I said then with what I say now. And that is, I think, you should put as much of yourself and your personality, and your quirkiness and all that, into your channel. And really cry, try and create that human connection rather than just doing trigger sounds and stuff. Now, that's not to say that there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think a lot, I was going to say, I think a lot of people have had really successful channels just with trigger sounds. Um, but usually there's something else going on with them too, something maybe a bit more mysterious. Like uh, Pomo would be a good example. I've never seen Pomo's face, but you see her lips and she talks to you in her accent and I'm really curious, who is she? And wow, she's got such a great voice. Even though most of her videos, I think, are trigger sounds. But I think most people who are successful, most people who want to do ASMR properly, properly, in my opinion. I'd put their own personality into it as much as they can, because uh, we're all interesting. You're interesting. Even I'm a little bit interesting. That's not to be bragging, it's just that we're all humans, we're all unique, we all have our own experiences, and as much as you may or may not think you know, some people might not think there's anything interesting or exciting about themselves. Yes, there is. You'll have something about you that other people would love to hear about or just see what you're like in addition to whatever ASMR you want to create. So, yeah, that would be my sort of suggestion. Be, be confident. Obviously, you have to advice would be to you have to be okay with being judged because your channel might suddenly blow up and you may have lots of people directing attention at you positive and negative mostly positive I would say so yeah put your own unique personality into your videos I have seen a couple of channels come and go where they experimented with just tapping on objects and stuff which is nothing wrong with um, but every video was generally the same and they wouldn't really nobody really knew who was who was who, the, who they were or not that they wanted any personal details or anything but they just didn't have any connection there so that I find makes a channel less interesting in my opinion so yeah um, that's it. It's all done. So, thanks so much for watching. Uh, go check out the channels below. Both uh, Articulate Design and CL, who tagged me, and uh, Grace's Grove, Zach's World, Jellybean Green, Artsy, and ASMR with Ali. Go check them out and go and check out the world's greatest head massage by Nomad Barber. It's amazing and Brittany ASMR ear cupping fantastic so uh, yeah that's it I hope that some of you like this video like the ramble and I really hope you have a great day and a great night and whatever time it is wherever you are stay relaxed Remember to breathe and I'll see you really soon. Okay. Bye bye. How did I manage to forget question number 15? Well, obviously, way more tired than I thought I was. So, question.
question number 15. What time of day do you film?